today's video, we will learn more about a function. How to differentiate a function from a relation. Now, let's define a function. A function is a rule of correspondence between two non-empty sets such that to each element of the first set called domain, there corresponds one and only one element of the second set called range. There are different ways on how to identify a function. So we have the ordered pairs, mapping diagram, a table, a graph, and also a rule. an example of an ordered pair. So we have set A, set R, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, and 4, 5. And let's get the domain of the set. So we have 1, 2, 3, and 4. So let's also get the range. So we have 2, 3, comma 4 and comma 5. So with this one, we can identify this one as a function because the domain corresponds to one and only one in the element of the range. So let's take an example for another set of ordered pairs. So here we have 1, comma 0, 0, comma 1, negative 1, comma 2, and 0, comma 3. So the domain of the set of ordered pairs are 1, comma 0, and comma negative 1. And the range of the set are 0, comma 1, comma 2, comma 3. So for this example, this is an example of a relation or not a function because from the definition, a function is a set of ordered pairs, x and y, such that no two ordered pairs have the same x value but different y values. Now let's take a look on the mapping diagram. On our example on set A, so the sets are, for the domains, And for the range, so as we can see, the domain corresponds to the range, which is a one-to-one -one relation. So if a relation is one-to-one, -one, therefore the relation is a function. Now let's take a look on our example for B. So let's say the set of example for the domain are the provinces located in the North Luzon. And let our range is their corresponding cities. Now, the relation is a many-to-one relation. If the relation is many-to-one, the relation is a function. On our last example for a mapping diagram, Let's take a look on the set of order pairs. Now, the relation is a one-to-many relation. The relation is not a function. On our next example are the graph. Let's take a look on our first graph. So on our graph is an example of an absolute value. So as we can see, we're going to use a vertical line test to see if the given graph is a function. If a vertical line passes through only one point on the graph, the graph is considered to be a function. 
And our second example is a graph of a parabola, which is open to the right. If a vertical line passes through the graph, touches two points on a graph, the graph is not a function. So let's evaluate the third example. So as you can see, if we're going to use our vertical line, this example is a function. And our last example is a graph of a circle. If we're going to use a vertical line test, the graph of a circle is not a function. On our next example, we are going to apply how to write a rule or equation in a real-life situation. So for example number one, a computer shop charges 20 pesos in every hour of computer rental. Represent your computer rental fee R using the function R of T where T is the number of hours you spent on the computer. So the function is R of T and the shop computer charges 20 pesos in every hour. So the rule is 20 times the time. On the second example, a jeepney fare F for the first 4 kilometer is 10 pesos base fare and an additional 50 cents for every succeeding distance D in kilometer. So we could write the function as F of D which is the constant value is 10 plus the succeeding kilometer or distance we're going to pay is 0.50 so we're going to add 0.5 times d as a rule for our situation then let's move on to another type of function a piecewise function a piecewise function is a function in which more than one formula is used to define the output so let's have an example a parking fee at the Visoria cost 20 pesos for the first two hours and an extra 5 pesos for each hour of extension. If you park more than 12 hours, you will pay a flat rate of 100 pesos instead. Now let's write a rule for a piecewise function for this kind of problem. If we're going to analyze the problem, we have different conditions to be satisfied. Now, let us set a rule for this. So, parking P with respect to time is P of T. For the first rule, we will simply write 20. For the first two hours, we will just simply write T less than or equal to 2. On our next rule, we are going to pay extra 5 pesos for our extension. So, we're going to write 20 plus 5 pesos or 5 times every hour or T. So the condition is if the time that we're going to spend is greater than 3 but less than or equal to 12 hours. Now, on our last rule, we are going to pay 100 pesos if we exceed more than 12 hours. So, this is how we're going to write a rule for this type of situation. Let's move on on our next example. Example number two. During Typhoon Ambo, Pag-asa tracks the amount of accumulating rainfall for the first three hours of Typhoon. The rain fell at a constant rate of 25 mm per hour. The Typhoon slows down for an hour and started again at a constant rate of 20 mm per hour for the next two hours. Write a piecewise function that models the amount of rainfall as a function of time. So let's write the amount of rainfall with respect to time. So let's say R of T is equal to, on our first condition, we have the rainfall at a constant rate of 25 mm per hour. Since this is a constant function, so we're going to write 25 if the rain fell greater than zero, or less than or equal to one hour. Now on our second condition is another constant function which is 20. The condition is the rainfall continues to pour more than one hour but less than or equal to three hours. 
which is equivalent to 2 hours. I guess this would be the last example for this lesson. Thank you and I hope to see you next time for another lesson. God bless.